and gentlemen, welcome back to WCS America, the round of 16. This is day number two, and I have the pleasure of interviewing our players for match number two of the night. It's going to be Moonglade and Crank. Moonglade, I'm going to start with you. Coming all the way from Australia, how are you feeling right now? Is, was the travel tough? Talk, me, talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, it was certainly long. Uh, getting used to the jet lag is always a, a challenge, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Now, of course, how do you consider your, your bracket, your, uh, your group draw compared to the other groups? Are you happy? Are you sad? What's going through your mind? Uh, Protoss, I find Protoss a bit hard at the moment, but um, I'd probably enjoy it more than ZVZ, so I'm pretty happy with this group. Yeah. Of course, you have a, a Protoss and two Terrans going up first against Crank. Now, I'm sure you watched some of the games yesterday. In watching that, is that going to play into your strategy at all? I mean, Crank obviously being the same team as Alicia. It, was it helpful watching those as far as research is concerned, or does that uh, did you already have a kind of a predetermined game plan? Well, I, I already had a fear of uh, Void Rays, so I just kind of strengthened that, and um, yeah, I, I just spent last night thinking about what I'm going to do, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can come up with something. All right, well, definitely looking forward to it. Uh, best of luck to you, and of course, Crank on Team Axiom. You got to tell me about the Philly Sal. What, what's going on with that? What's up? What's the name here? The team you watch now? I will learn. 안 쓰려고 했는데 앞, 앞 경기가 너무 졸려가지고 자는 바람에 머리가 너무 졸려서 어쩔 수 없이 쓰게 됐어요. Uh, I wasn't planning to wear Philly's hat, but uh, I fell asleep because the first two game was quite long, so my hair got messed up, so I had to wear it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, now you're of course uh, going up against uh, two Terrans and a Zerg. What do you think about your your group draw compared to the other groups? Are you happy, sad? How confident are you that you'll get top two today? 오늘 본인의 조에 대해서 어떻게 생각해도 테란 두 명, 저가 하나 이렇게 있는데 자신 있나요? 아니면 슬픈가요? 아니면 뭐 기분이 좋나요? 조에 대해서. 일단 어제 경기에서 양준신 선수가 좀 8강 진출을 이뤄냈기 때문에 제가 못 이뤄낸다면 엄청난 놀림을 받을 거라고 생각해서 무조건 뚫는다는 마음가짐으로 임하고 있고요. 일단 최현식 선수를 짓밟아 주는 게 목표예요. Uh, first of all, my teammate just made a round of eight, which was Alicia. Of course, if I do not make it up to round of eight, I know that he will tease me. So I have to, no matter what, I have to win. And second of all, I will crush STC, no matter what, in this group. That's all I want to say. What about Moonglade? Any, any comments on Moonglade? Moonglade did not care. I was in uh, even though the, it's not the point about me getting to the round of base, but it's it's the point is here that I have to crush STC no matter what. So even though Mungulade beats me, I know that in the final round I'm going to play against STC. So I will beat or crush. STC no matter what in this group and I'll make it to the top eight. All right, you heard it from Craig, guys. Definitely set up to have an awesome rest of the day. Of course, WCS America round of 16. The second match of the night about to come your way. Moon Glavers, Craig, can please shake hands and report to your battle stations. We got Axlab and Total Biscuit taken for the commentary. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, Alex, for that. And well, here's the thing. The Axiom guys were watching Shoutcraft America. And they said, where is BM? Where is old <laughs> BM? I guess they must have left it in Canada. So he brought some of his own, Korean style. But he is actually annoyed that STC said he would rather face Moonglade. And as a direct result, he, even though they're friends, he, he now has a rivalry. So that's what can happen. There's drama occurring already. Given that extra motivation, because of course, to face off against STC. He's going to have to win. Yep. He's, yeah, he's gonna have to either go through Moonglade or hope that they'll they'll meet up in, in the final match like we was talking yep. about earlier. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't do a toss up on this man. This group is stacked. Good lord, Crank and Moonglade. I mean, Moonglade in its in himself considered one of the best foreigners. That's been the case for a while. You can look at the information. Like he crushed WCS Oceana. It was fantastic. His win rate against Protoss, as he already explained, is not that great. He has a fear of Void Rays. I don't think there's a Zerg that doesn't right now. <laughs> well, not that many Terrans that don't right now. But his results are great. He is a strong player and a great figure within the community and he is certainly the guy really leading the charge for his team right now. So I wouldn't mess with Moonglade under any circumstances. I know for a fact that Crank is not underestimating him. And that's, that's definitely true. Crank should not underestimate him, but 
P- uh, PVZ is Crank's premier matchup. He's, yes, it is. He's probably, uh, I think a lot of people say he's, he's the best or maybe just below perhaps parting in, in the PVZ matchup. One of the top couple in the very world. And he's proven it in several tournaments before he's knocked out world-class Zerg players. Uh, we saw him uh, earlier in, uh, in the round of 32. It's absolutely just scary. Uh, his 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 PVZ dominance, uh, especially using Void Rays and Colossi. Yeah, the the thing about Crank is that I know a lot of people are now calling this the Axiom Void Ray build, which is nonsense. It's like actually the Platinum League ladder Void Ray build. It's just <laughs> it turns out when you take that build and you give it to a top Kore Korean Grandmaster, they're pretty damn good with it. But the thing about Crank is that he has been on top of the PVZ matchup for a long time. Even all the way back to his days in Slayers, he was the sniper for that particular matchup. He's incredibly strong in it. He's very confident in it. And what really scares me, as we were talking about before we even went into this, he can bust out a lot of different builds in this matchup and have them all work. If he gets to the late game, then he will be using those high-tech units. He will be using them very effectively. Zerg struggle to deal with that kind of composition. He even now has new options in that respect because he can break Tempests out if the player decides to go for something like, say, Broodlord. So he's scary, man. You know, I'm hyping my own player up a lot here, but at the end of the day, he's scary in this matchup. But Moonglade, I think if anything, Foreign Zergs have proven up to this point that they prepare well for this. If you, you know, Snoot is a prime example. Alicia falls to Snoot. Snoot does a great job of doing of dealing with that, and Moonglade's an incredibly smart player and very accomplished. So this is going to be a really good match, I think, one way or the other. Well, let's see if the players are ready. It looks like they both are. So when we get this first game started, the map is going to be on Whirling. This, of course, is a very big map. I really anticipate Crank to just take that third base and play, uh, you know, heavy with the Void Ray usage and then adding in either Colossi or Templar or both, depending on how Moonglade reacts. He very well might. We will see as we go into this. Whirlwind, I think, is a good map for a macro-focused Protoss, but we've also got to bear in mind, of course, that it may benefit Moonblade as well. He is more than capable of... I mean, look at the size of that thing. Good lord, you could fit an entire town in this place. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Welcome to Whirlwind, which is inexplicably not moving. <laughs> I think there's a little problem with the, uh, the computer there. There we go. It was, yep. it was giving us a chance to appreciate just how beautiful drones are. And <laughs> I think we should always do that from time to time. Those little guys get neglected all the time. People don't even research Burrow to hide them, to make them safe. They don't respect them. And I feel eventually they're going to unionize, and then they will lead the revolution. And it's at that point that Zerg players should really be afraid. Spawning to the northeast position here on Whirlwind in the uh, blue trunks with a, that is a nine pool coming out already. Surprise, surprise from Moonglade. Well, it is Moonglade from Team NV. And his opponent in the bottom left corner of Whirlwind, or the Southwest, as you could say. Indeed. Crank, the red Protoss player from Axiom. All right. So what we're seeing right here, of course, is a nine pool. That one of the least common timings that I know of when it comes to this kind of matchup. And we're also going gas. This is not a cancellation. This indicates to me it really can only be one thing. Please do correct me if I'm wrong here. If you see gas in a pool on this timing, you are generally looking at a Link Bane all in. It it sometimes involves Banings. I would say more often it's going to be Speed Link. Speed Link, yeah. And this is a build that you almost never saw in Wings of Liberty, but it's designed specifically to stop gateway expansions. Of yeah. course, if you just have a whole bunch of Speed Links and you walk into a wall with a Cannabon, you look kind of silly. But with these gateway expansions, the wall gets up significantly later. So if you stockpile a whole bunch of Zergings in the back of your base, then when you get Speed, you just run them really quickly. If you're pointed a gateway expand and you're walking around with two Zealots and Mothership you core, just kill them straight away. Exactly. Exa yeah. um, so it's very unfortunate for Moonglade that Crank actually is going to forge. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not that's not so good for him at all. I mean, it may force him down the Baneling path. I mean, you're totally right there. He, since he pulled out of his extractor, he only wanted the gas for the speed rather than for the Baneling nest. We have seen a couple of those nice little builds, but most of the time in ZBZ. And yeah, he's going to run into a wall. This, this is a blind counter for what he assumed Crank would do, and he has rolled the dice very much incorrectly here which does put him behind 
There is no drone production coming in, as you can see. And also, Moonglade is stockpiling as many links as he can to make a good run at this. It is still not outside the realms of possibility that this will actually work, though. It is entirely possible that it might, but it is a difficult thing for Moonglade. It's going to rely on Crank being a little bit too greedy and not actually walling off correctly. I mean, there's, there's a couple things to note, though. Uh, one is Crank's not scouting, so he's not going to yeah. see this coming. No. And two is, with the forge in the main base, Crank is going to be slower to build that wall than he than he would be obviously if the forge is in. So yeah. uh, this is this is not a build most Protoss players anticipate, which is why it's not used all the time. Obviously, it's used once in a blue moon. If Crank sees the Zergians as they cross the map, he should be able to wall in and take the game. But I don't think he's going to. And if he doesn't have a wall, they just run straight into his main. He's just dead instantly. Yeah, and that yeah. might happen. He it might could. have been a bit too greedy. Yeah, uh, there is a probe right there. He's not going to see this going. As you said, there are more links coming in. Oh, he's going another pilot. If he actually sees this, he's not going to see it in time. The links are going to get in, and this is actually disastrous right here. And he's decided not to try and finish the wall off. All the links are coming into the base here. And Crank does have a lot of probes and could very well get a good surround here. He's bringing the Zealot out. He's actually going to bring them all over to the other side of the map. He's currently lost five probes, six probes, now bringing all of his probes in. It's a shame that he didn't get the wall off there. He wants to fight around the cannon, but of course Moonglade's not stupid enough to do that, and he's going to take that Nexus out. And Crank, he really can't afford to lose the Nexus. Uh, one base Protoss, the, the Zerg can just crank out drones like a minute. Oh, all the probes are going down. This is disastrous for Crank. He may eventually clean up this. No, he's not even going to. No, he's not going to clean it up. This, this, this is probably GG right here. That's a really, really nice cheese there from Moonglade, and that is a very quick game one there. Very nicely calculated by him. And unfortunately, on a map of this size, it's not the kind of thing that you usually expect to happen. And as a direct result, Crank gets completely caught off guard, doesn't wall off, and loses the first game. You know, Whirlwind is one of those maps where you do see some of these crazy cheeses because it's four spawns, your opponent's less likely to scout you early. We've seen Life in particular, there's a lot of six pulls on Whirlwind. Yeah. Moogly doing a little bit of a different build. And uh, as a Protoss player, if you want to make sure that doesn't happen to you, you just have to scout right after you build that pylon. Make sure your probe uh, yep. can identify that build coming. And if you do... Yeah, and if you, you see you it coming, win. you shut it down completely. That's the thing. But you, you can exploit a Protoss that does not scout in that respect. And that was a nicely done build by Moonglade. And it was funny. You know what I was saying earlier, the idea of preparation. The fact that we're seeing these foreign Zerg players really preparing for these kind of matchups. Blatantly obvious. That's exactly what Moonglade's doing there. Throwing that build out in game one. Getting himself a nice advantage. A nice edge going into this series. And obviously, I would expect a more straight-up game from him in game two but it now puts Crank in a situation where he's on the back foot and has to win two in a row, which is a tricky concept for any pro gamer at this kind of level. I, I think it's very smart for Moonglade. I'm sure he studied a lot of Crank's games in Whirlwind. Notice, okay, he likes to put the Forge in his main, yep. so his wall comes up slower, and he likes to scout late. So why not punish him uh, for, for playing that style? And, and that's the preparation paying off. It yep. wasn't just a total Ramley coin flip. It was a study coin flip yep. to maximize those odds, and he's got to be happy with that win. Well, yeah, I mean, if you can take it with a prepared build, then that just that's everything paying off for you, isn't it? It's exactly what you wanted from that. And really, like you said, you know, having to defend that Nexus was a really unfortunate thing to have happen. Perhaps Crank could have waited a little longer. The Stalker was coming out as well. He could have maybe got a second Zealot out. He also didn't get a good engagement, and that's Moonglade really nailing him down there. He brings himself off the attack on the Nexus, gets a good surround on the probes, and then the probes get crushed. If it was the other way around, with Zealots in the mix, then we might have seen Crank get away with that with maybe even but he would have had a second Nexus up by that point which would have actually given him the advantage but as it stands shoulda woulda coulda and we've got the first game in this best of three series going to Moonglade in convincing fashion here with that great opening. We'll be right back with game two after a short break.